had some requests for NMR spectrum, so let's draw the NMR spectrum of ethyl bromide. That's a CH3CH2Br. Now the first thing I want you to remember is that you'll need an x-axis that starts at zero and goes up to, I don't know, about 11. This area is called D-shielded or downfield, and this is called shielded or upfield. This is measured in ppm, and you'll need a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Just give yourself some numbers. You're always supposed to label your grids in math anyways. So, the hydrogens that are closer to electronegative atoms are going to be further downfield. That's further to the left on these diagrams, but actually means a higher number of parts per million shift. So what you're going to end up with is a peak that is, uh, I don't know, probably at about like three or three and a half that represents the two hydrogens that are close to the BR. You're going to end up with a second peak probably a little closer to zero because it's farther away from the electronegative atoms that needs to be worth 1.5 times as much area under the curve. What I mean is that the whole area under this peak is probably worth about two. It's called the integrated area and it's two because there's two hydrogens there. Then that other peak, which I'm, again, just putting a little closer to zero because it's further away from electronegative atoms, will integrate to three. It's going to be a three to two ratio. Cool. So the, P, the, the spectrum itself is going to be mostly flat except for those peaks. And if you have a low resolution NMR machine, you're only going to see the two peaks and that's it. But you might be asked for the splitting pattern. If you have a high resolution NMR machine, each of these peaks will actually be split a tiny bit into either a doublet or a triplet, um, et cetera, et cetera, depending on how many hydrogens are adjacent to the hydrogens in question. Let's be clear. These, this peak belong to these two hydrogens. How many hydrogens are connected to carbons that are connected to that carbon? This one and this one and this one are all what we call adjacent to these two because they're on the next carbon atom in the chain. So three adjacent hydrogen atoms will split this peak into four things. If you start out with one peak and you split it once, it becomes two, and then if you split it again, it becomes three, and then if you split it again, it becomes four. So you end up with what's called a quartet instead. So low resolution NMR gives you the red, high resolution NMR would give you peak, 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 like that. They're not going to be spread out that much, but I'm doing that for dramatic effect here. These three hydrogens, that's one, two, three, have two hydrogens that are adjacent to them. So they'll split into three peaks because you start with one, split once, split twice, three peaks. That's going to give you one, two, three. Beauty. So low resolution, high resolution. And if you're wondering where the ratio of these peaks comes from, this is a one to one ratio uh, in terms of the size or heights. This is about one to three to three to one. These should remind you of Pascal's triangle, if you know what that is, but it's also due to combinations in math. Cool, so there we are. We've got two spectrums, low resolution and high resolution, NMR for ethyl bromide. Two types of hydrogen, each one split uniquely, if you're being asked this question, your teacher probably wants the splitting pattern. It's what makes this interesting at all. Best of luck.